All right, time for hearts and minds. You know, of all of the things that they did for spooky content in this game, let me be real, there's not many, but they did several things that are appropriately creepy. And this is one of them. It's literally called horrifying. Dun, dun, dun. Let's check it out. I've lost contact with an old colleague, Dr. Sabak. Now, this guy is a super black Vulcan ops science student. academy studying psionic phenomena. He's calling a this guy a ago, colleague. He went into seclusion on a remote research station. That raises a lot of system. ethical questions. He hasn't been heard from in some time. I'd like someone to check up on him. Don't worry. He's just a typical Vulcan by himself. You shouldn't have any problems. Uh-huh. I'll believe that if I see it. And I've played this mission before, so I already know the answer. <laughs> oh boy. Let's go. And now we just click the transport button, because I don't feel like flying there manually. Especially not while I'm recording it. Flying there manually can actually be kind of fun. Alright, investigate the Natu Prime. Hmm, I'm choosing my which is Dilia. Yeah, yeah, this is the once per account way you clone you can get for a um, Jim Hadar. If I discharge him, I will literally never be able to get another one on my entire account. I question the logic behind this. I mean, Certain of the those freebies in that bundle make sense to be um, limited edition. Uh, certain. Warning. Now this is an interesting one because the phaser turrets don't actually become hostile or targetable until you walk into the room. This was actually genuinely deadly because you see how the targs are dying. Yeah, the targs don't have EV suits. It used to be you had to manually switch to an EV suit or this would kill you slowly. Nowadays, that doesn't happen. Which removes the um, tension from this sequence. Also, once you've done this several times, it becomes boringly easy to complete the puzzle. But hey, you know what? The, the, the main thing with that puzzle was always the uh, um, timer counting down. Like, no, I need to uh, complete the puzzle before I die of asphyxiation. That was the only actual um, challenge to it. And it's part of the reason why you had to come into this room before the turrets would aggro you. Because this is the room where you get asphyxiated. And... Anyways, moving on. Oh yeah, also this door, uh, the console puzzle was to unlock the door, so hey. Now, this is interesting because you V-scan and it's not pointing to uh, uh, Sabak. Yeah, the actual thing you need to do here is examine body, but, well, here's the thing. As far as I've been able to discern, this is actually coded as a talk to NPC dialogue, except that it's an untargetable NPC. You can't click on Sabak. He's just laying there, pretending to be dead. Okay, plot is this is actually a corpse, but coding wise, it's an NPC. Except that we don't actually talk to him, it's our bridge officer talking about him. Now, remember how the uh, tricorder pointed that way when I did the V-scan? That's because it's pointing to a quest objective we haven't gotten to yet. Now, because the quest thing changed, suddenly there's a... Nope, nope, still not pointing that way. Hmm. Yeah, the actual quest objective is here. And you see the little mission mark at the top of the screen telling you which room to go to for it. This is one of those things that is a bit weird. 
when you're in this room, it will actually point to it. And I, I think uh, the, the hallway outside, it's just that the Medical scan radius... Start date 89325.25. Experimentation with the neurotoxin as a means to trigger damage and subsequent bio-response shows promise. Culturing additional specimens. Medical log. Unethical medical research. Lots of it. Ionizing Remember what I was saying about Grant and Drake being a black ops spook? Must log for yeah. further research into clairvoyant medical log. Stardate 89332.14. Specimens showing additional aggression. Likely side effect of radiation exposure. Locking down interior containment hey, Vulcan, doors. With thinking of the Fibonacci sequence Fibonacci as sequence. easily, easily remembered. remembered. Medical log. Stardate 89336.92. Emotive control faculties regenerating. Huge success. Medical log. Stardate 89340.05. What does he mean by a space more conducive to concentration? Replicating a space I'm genuinely not certain. I think this is the final room, though, that he's talking about there. There's actually only a handful of rooms in here. It's like, here's, the, here's where we beam in. Here's that hallway with a, a computer console that tries to kill you. Here's the, the table where we find a corpse. And here's these three rooms here that are apparently sleeping chambers. Then, you know, we have the, have the room with the spiders. And then you have the room with all the uh, clones and bottles. And then you have the meditation room. That's the only practical purpose I can think of for this room. Also... Presumably, there are additional rooms in this facility that we can't see. This is actually one of those things where the plot suggests the existence of more than what we're looking at, but the it's a suggestion. There's, there's nothing actually there. This actually doesn't have a whole lot of extra doors either. It's like this room, all of the uh, doors, we can open them, see what's on the other side of them. This one was locked until we looked at that data pad, which, does that logically make sense? No. And you see the glowing console there. Why was it having such a large scan radius? That's because it's not a single console. Both of these consoles are a single object. I think that's actually making its hitbox something like half the size of this room and thus much closer to us than it looks like it should be. Story-wise, one of the uh, environmental storytelling things here is that we have a whole bunch of cages with, that uh, used to have spiders uh, trapped inside them. The doors on them actually do look large enough that you could have the spider enter and leave. And presumably he was only storing one spider per cage. Although if we look closely, there's like two dozen cages or so, and we only shot five spiders. Research on the bodies has been promising, but symptoms of Bendy syndrome most readily manifest themselves in behavior rather than biology. To facilitate testing, I am engaging in a series of mind. Yeah, that's right. To give He's copying his personality. Copy of my personality. His entire Bendy personality will display. That's um, a lot of of uh, mental whatever. That's an interesting uh, thing to, to, to ponder, though. It's like, uh, is this guy working with Franklin Drake because Franklin Drake wanted people who could make uh, clones who would think they were the real person, but because they had a copy of the original's personality artificially implanted into their minds? Raises a lot of questions when you think about that. Also, this room has several dead Sibox in it. Yeah, um, he hints that he's done this and made a lot of clones. We don't know how many. There's actually nothing in here that actually tells us how many of them. And here's something that's unique. Seriously, Dor, what is wrong with you? 
I'm genuinely not sure what the Targ is going to do. Here we have one of his uh, clone storage rooms. Possibly the only one. Like I said before, it's like it's not entirely clear how large the facility is supposed to be. Oh, come on. Dang it. Okay. If you don't have a combat pet aggro in you, uh, you can talk to him before shooting him. You have to shoot him. But talking to him is actually an option. Despite the fact that uh, in most situations you do not actually have the ability to talk to uh, hostile NPCs. Because he is coded as an enemy. Also, he's coded as a Vulcan. Something to consider. This is actually the first mission in the game to actually use a Vulcan factional logo. I do not believe that there is actually a. Um, kill thing for Vulcans programmed into the game, so killing Sabax like 100 or 200 times isn't actually going to give you anything. And the ones in the tank, you, I, as far as I know, you can't actually do anything to kill them. They are, however, coded as enemy NPCs for some reason. Yeah, your bridge officer's like, uh, how many of these guys are there? But, as I mentioned before, this room doesn't actually have any uh, visible doors that we can't access. So, let's go a little bit deeper. More crates of supplies. Okay, that sounds cool. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that, that was basically the same voice line being repeated multiple times. I think the game actually plays that one voice clip one time for each of the uh, Zibox in this room. And to make it more interesting, it times it so that it goes with uh, the speed at which the Zibox get aggro individually. So that the voice lines don't sync up. They're like slightly out of phase with each other. It's like the same thing several times, but like a fraction of a second off. And there's like five of them. <laughs> it's a neat audio effect. That is something that you would not want to do most of the time in this game. However, you know, when appropriate... Yeah, I'm not leaving that. Anyways, so one of the things that you find out when you get here, though, is that... Um, We've seen the real Sabak here. The guys we just shot are his clones, though. Where's the real Sabak? Hmm. Remember what I said about the whole dead body thing? Yeah, pretty sure that was actually the real Sabak. I hate that you have to wait for these doors to open. Anyway, though. Uh, other things that are interesting is that this particular console prop is usually bolted to floors, not bolted to walls. It does look nice bolted to a wall, though. Do, 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 do. Yeah, all of the uh, assets for this are things that uh, were created for other missions elsewhere in the game and simply be used for this one. Even the weird things. Yeah, like this. I'm pretty sure that this is meant to be the original Sabak. Uh... Uh, this is uh, what happened when he died, and several of his clones, who have his entire personality and memories and stuff, were doing an autopsy on him uh, to uh, ascertain the uh, manner of his death. Yeah. His clones were attempting to continue his work because they had all of his memories and knowledge and stuff, and Hmm, this mission just gets creepier and creepier when you think about it. <laughs> Which I guess is kind of the point. It's like, on the uh, surface, it's like, oh, that was weird. It's like, wait a second, what was going on? Why? Oh. Oh, my. Anyways, though. 
Uh, let's leave Kanatu so we can see the final uh, dialogue. I have to say, it's also a very boring looking facility for a plot important Clones? reason. With copies of his personality? It's just hmm. whatever Franklin Drake Well, I suppose even Vulcans can be a little unpredictable. Thank you. I'll send someone to clean up. Yeah. Not sure what Franklin Drake means by cleaning up, but I think that's the entire reason why he says clean up, is because he's intentionally making it ambiguous what his um, agents will do. Anyways, rewards of this are actually kind of fun. Zombie dance, you get a Lerpa that's... Okay. The other thing that's uh, unique about this is the whole, like, size stun thing. The stun thing, however, has a very low chance of happening, even lower if it's a boss monster. And the psionic damage is... I'd rather have a damage mod. Anyway, though... It is unique, anyway. The, 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 the real rewards are obviously the uh, emote and the uh, duty officer. And, well, the duty officer isn't necessarily a good one. But, hey, you know what? It's relatively easy to get. Like, Hearts and Minds is not a difficult mission. This is one of those that it's a blue quality one. And I would just use it for, you know duty officer missions because slotting this on ground there's not actually a whole lot of psionic traits in the game uh my inclination on this is that it's really meant to be for uh mind melt or nerve pinch because those are like stereotypically vulcan things i think it also works on telekinesis the, you know, one that's a ranged attack. But, like I said, it's traits, not kit modules or anything like that. Just traits. There's And also, it's recharge time, not passive traits. There's very, very few things this actually affects. And thus, it's probably not going to actually uh, do a whole lot. Uh, but it's interesting. And we're done. I hope you guys enjoyed this look. See you later.